for GCF and DOS. That stands for Greatest Common Factor and Difference of Squares. Let's, uh, it's a little bit more in-depth on factoring for us today. Before we get there, let's take a look at our uh, X-Men team we have here. Mr. Kelly, I love this picture of Mr. Kelly. It's just the greatest thing ever. All right, it is my favorite picture by far of anything we have. It's the the lamb chop. I don't know. I just think it's hilarious. We have uh, so that's Kelly Wolverine. We got Bruce Klops here, chilling with his glasses, and of course the one and only Professor Bean. All right, don't uh, let his mind get you too much. All right. So we're going to look at some things here with greatest common factor and then a trick kind of with difference of squares. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is talk about a greatest common factor. Now, again, this is something you probably have done in the past. Well, definitely done in the past. You may have forgotten it, but it's something you've done in the past, all right? So when we have this here, we have a common factor between 5n squared, 50n, and 80. We have to take out the greatest common factor. So sometimes there will be several numbers that are in common. We have to choose the one that is the greatest one. Here's what I always do, and I think it works great, especially on times where you're not sure. I find the lowest factor. So here, it's a factor of 5. And I'm going to write down all my factors of 5. And I want the biggest number that goes into all of these. So this one's kind of easy. 5, does 5 go into 5? Yes. Does it go into 50? Yes. Does it go into 80? Of course it does. So I'm going to take a 5 out. Now when we do that, we are going to be left with the three, the same number of terms, and I'm going to divide. 5 divided by 5 is 1, and we have an n squared. Negative 50 divided by 5 is negative 10n, and 80 divided by 5 is positive 16. All right, so it's kind of like undistributing, right? So now, when I look here, I still have to factor again. So now I need two numbers that multiply to 16 and add to negative 10. This is just like last section. We know that n times n is n squared. So what are two numbers that multiply to 16 and add to negative 10? Negative 8 times negative 2 will work out. And again, you should check that. Let's see, n times n is n squared. Negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16. All right, let's come over here. So the first thing I want to look for is my greatest common factor. All right. So my smallest number is 6. So 1 times 6 or 2 times 3, right? So does 6 go into 8? No. So I can cross that out. Does 3 go into 8? No. Does 2 go into 8? Yes, it does. Does it go into 6? Of course. Does it go into 20? Yes. So I'm going to take a 2 out. Now in this case, we also have to look here. We have some Vs. I have three Vs here. I have two of them here. And I have one factor of V here. I can only take the greatest common factor out. I can't take three V's away from the rest of these. The only one I can take out of all of them is one V. All right, so now we're going to go back and divide it out. Eight divided by two is four. V to the third divided by V to the first is V to the second. Negative six divided by two is negative three. I had two V's. I take one out. I'm left with one. And negative 20 V divided by two V is negative 10. Now, again, we have to factor the what's left if it is factorable. 4 times negative 10, I need two numbers that multiply to negative 40 and add to negative 3. I'm going to start by putting 4v here in both times. Good. And let's see. I think negative 8 and positive 5 multiplies to negative 40 and adds to negative 3. All right, now, this time, remember, we go back and we take a greatest common factor out. There's a 4 here. And remember, I put it up here. This is gone. It disappears. It's not listed. This 2V is listed. Once I take it out in the initial step, it best be in the answer. All right? So now I have it. 4 divided by 4. I'm going to have V minus 2. No common factor here. 4V plus 5. And a lot of kids will say, do I have to have all three things? Isn't it good enough if I just factor what's left? No, it's not. You have to have all three factors here for that answer to be correct. All right, so now we can factor, we can solve these just like before, all right? So remember when we had this, we need to get all our like terms together. So I'm going to move this 8x over to here now. Subtract 8x to the third. And I'm going to add 2x. 
So let's see what we have. So we have 8x to the third minus 8x squared minus 16x equals 0. So let's take a common factor out first. So my biggest, uh, my smallest number is 8. So that's 8 times 1, 2 times 4. Always start with the biggest number, 8. Does 8 go in 8? Yes, 8, yes, 16, yes. So I'm going to take it out. And there's an x in each term, so I'm going to take 1x out. So 8 divided by 8, that's going to be x squared, because I had 3, I took 1 out. Negative 8 divided by 8, that's going to be negative 1x. Negative 16 divided by 8 is negative 2. So now we need two numbers that multiply to negative 2 and add to negative 1. So we have 8x, remember that's one of our factors. And let's see, two numbers that multiply to negative 2. Negative 2 and positive 1, and they add to negative 1. Now at this time we have to use the zero product property. We learned that last time, right? So I have to take every factor, every factor, set it equal to zero. Because it could be any of these that are zero that would make this true. So I divide by 8, and I have x is 0. That's one answer. I add 2, x is 2. That's another answer. Subtract 1, x is negative 1. That's our third answer. All right? So we could have three possible answers in this case now that we have a greatest common factor. All right, let's sketch that. So we could have it 0. It could be at 2 or it could be at negative 1. Ooh, now these are tricky. Remember, this is not a quadratic anymore because it's got a third, uh, the highest power is 3 here. So maybe, you know, you put it up like this. It's obviously got to go up and come back down, so it could be something like that. All right, you could have started and gone this way as well. All right, let's take a look at this one. So 14 times 1 and 2 times 7. 14 does not go into 94. 7 doesn't go into 94, but 2 does. So g of x equals 2. What is that? 47, excuse me, 47. 94 divided by 2 is 47. 47x minus 14. All right, so now I want to find the zeros of that. So we have 2, that's our first factor. We need two numbers that multiply to what? 7 times negative 14 is negative 98, and it's got to add to negative 47. Now, this may be a case where you don't know the factors of 98 so well, so maybe you put it in the calculator. You do that table trick I taught you at the end of last section. All right, so I'm going to start by putting 7x, the leading one in both, and I know that 98 divided by 2 is 49. So negative 49 and positive 2 multiplies to negative 98, and negative 49 plus 2 equals negative 47. So let's see here. Um, <clears throat> I have a common factor here of 7. Remember, this, this 7 doesn't stay. It's just being taken out because we have an extra factor of it. So that's x minus 7 times 7x plus 2. All right, we have to set all three of our factors equal to 0. So 2 could equal 0 x minus 7 could equal 0, or 7x plus 2 could equal 0. Now let's take a look here. Can 2 equal 0? No. See, there's no variable here. This is nothing. If we were solving it, it'd be no solution. We have other options here, so we may actually have a solution. So we don't write no solution. All right? But that is different than over here, where I have a variable of 8x. I, a lot of times people will say x is 2 from this, and it's not 2 from that, all right? On this one, add 7, so x equals 7. This one, subtract 2, so 7x equals negative 2, and then divide by 7. x equals negative 2 over 7. There you have it, all right? All right, so now we're going to do a trick, difference of squares. And difference of squares is because we have a special situation. We have ax squared minus c, all right? And a and c are going to be perfect squares. Now, if you don't know your perfect squares, shame on you. 1 times 1, 2 times 2, uh, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5, all right? You can make this list yourself. These are numbers that you should by now know off the top of your head.
You shouldn't have to write them down like this. All right? So let's get to the trick in a second. But first of all, let's multiply. Let's factor this out. So I have to do uh, first times last. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 49. All right? And they add to the middle term. Now, is there any middle term here? No. So that's 0. All right. So I have x and I have x. Let's see, what are factors of 49 that add to 0? So negative 7 and positive 7 add to 0. There we have it. All right? And notice 49 is a perfect square. It's the square root of 7. All right, let's come down here. Let's try this one. I need two numbers that multiply to 4 times 9, negative 36, and add to 0. So I'm going to put 4v in the front of both. All right, two numbers that multiply to negative 36, negative 6 and positive 6, right? And here there's a common factor of 2. Here's a common factor of 2. So when I get rid of that, it's 2v minus 3 times 2v plus 3, okay? So let's check that out. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. There's a pattern emerging here, all right? I could factor this. You don't need to know this difference of squares. You absolutely don't need to know it. If you want to multiply and add a zero, that's perfectly fine. But the problem is that this is just a trick that you should recognize and make your life better. All right? Here's the trick. What is the square root of 4? It's 2. And where did we put it? We put it in the front of both factors. What is the square root of 9? 3. And we put it in the back of both factors factors. In one we had a minus, in the other we had a plus. All right? So whenever we have this, we're going to have the square root So some number at the front minus that number, some number at the uh, front here plus that same number, all right? It's always going to be that way. Let's take a look at these. Watch how easy these are. First thing you have to do is, are they perfect? Is 36 perfect? Yes, that's 6. Is 11 perfect? Yeah, or is 121 perfect? Yes, it's 11. So right off the bat, I know it's perfect square. I have two terms. One's minus, one's plus. The square root of 36 is 6x. It goes in the front of both. The square root of 121 is 11. It goes in the back. Done. Too easy. Let's try this one. Is 25 perfect? Yes. 5x times 5x. Square root of 81? 9. Front and back. Done. Is 32 perfect? Oh, this is not perfect. Well, let's take a look here. 32. Maybe it's a common factor. So 1, 2, 3 doesn't go. 4 times 8, right? So does 32 go into 15? No. Does 16? No. Does 8? No. Does 4? No. 2 does, though. And there's an x in both. So I'm going to take a 2x out. What's left here? 32 divided by 2 is 16x squared minus 50 divided by 2 is 25. Now, this is really important. It only works if it's minus, all right? Because if it's a positive, all right, Positive means I have to have the same positive 3 and positive 3, and that won't add up to 0. So let's take a look here. Now I have perfect squares, and I'm off to the races. The square root of 16 is 4x, and the square root of 25 is 5. 1's minus, 1's plus. Adios. Piece of cake. All right? It's a great trick to know. So pause the video and try these on your own. All right, so over here on the first one, I had to take a greatest common factor out. I took a 6 out. That left me with a difference of squares. Perfect square here. Perfect square here. So the square root of x squared is x. Square root of 36 is 6. 1's minus, 1's plus. Over here, I got everything to the left-hand side, so I added 3p. There's no p over here to add it to, but that's all right. I just put it at the end here. Subtracted 8p squared. 20 minus 8 is 12 took a greatest common factor. Now remember, this 3p is in the end. It's going to be vital. I have to set that equal to 0 because p would equal 0. Did some factoring. 
got p plus 1 times 3p plus 1. Set both factors equal to 0, all three of them. So my answers are 0, negative 1, or negative 1 third. Here's a little clip from my favorite math show, The Big Bang Theory. I will see you all on the flip side.